Warning, I'm about to let you guys know that I am not a movie reviewer, so this will probably be a bad movie review video. If you guys want like a better knowledge about the movie Six Pack, the full movie is in the uh, description below. Hope you guys enjoyed the movie. It's very cool. Now, time for the video. Enjoy my mumbleness. Yeah. What is going on, EA Nation fans? This is the Impress 48 here, and welcome to my second ever racing movie review. I'm going to be reviewing a 1982 movie called Six Pack. Before I talk about the movie, let me tell you a story of how I know about this movie and all that stuff. So, <clears throat> I remember somewhere around last fall, I believe it was, I think, October or something like that. I was watching a video on Dale Jr. Download about Steve Latard talking about Days of Thunder when he saw that movie for the first time. And then Jr. was going over other racing movies. Uh, for example, like Stroker Ace. I've never seen that movie. Um, obviously, Tyler Good Nights. Um, and then he brought out these movies I've never heard of called Six Pack and Winning. And I ended up finding two full movies of Six Pack and Winning. And I've been saving those movies on my Watch Later playlist for four months. I've been waiting four months to watch one of those movies. Why four months? Because busy with college. It's going miserable, by the way. Um, I've been watching a lot of different videos. Sometimes I've been lazy. However, yesterday when I was in the uh, writing center for like tutoring and stuff, I I like caught up with like videos I watched in the subscription box and my history, all that good stuff. And then I was like, you know what? I've been avoiding this movie for far too long. It's been four months. I'm going to watch that movie. And if you guys are big fans of late model races, old school racing, dirt races, Mainly old school racing and all that stuff. This movie's for you. It's a good movie. But I will get to that movie right now. So just to let you guys know, I do have my laptop open. Uh, I, I, I am looking up six packs. So I would look less of an idiot. Trying not to remember and all that stuff. So I'm not really cheating. Anyway, so six pack came out on July 16th of 1982 in theaters. It was directed by Daniel Petrie. The box office was $20.23 million. The movie was produced by Michael Trickhills. Trickhills. Trick okay. And then the music composed by Charles Fox and Roger Cook. So the movie's about a race car driver named Brewster Baker, who was played by Kenny Rogers. He stopped by at a gas station in Texas. He returns to find that his race car has been stripped of bare. So yeah, pretty much his race parts of his cars, of his car got stolen. Like, it took like a bunch of stuff. And it turned out to be these six orphans, these six kids. He chases down the culprits who turned out to be a group of mechanically inclined orphans. And they're thieves, let's just say. Led by young Breezy, actor Diane Lane. I think she's the oldest out of the six orphans. And her brother Doc, played by Anthony Michael Hall. But Brewster learns that the local sheriff, which is named by Barry Corbin, has blackmailed the kids into doing this, doing his illegal bidding. So the race car driver decides to take one of the poor orphans as his pit crews. I hope that's not a spoiler. I mean, I'll have the full movie down in the uh, link below anyways. So, I don't think that'll be a problem at all. So, the movie started with uh, Brewster Baker, as I did mention. He was at a gas station having his meal. Probably, if I can remember. And then after, like, the gas station deal, like, and then he was dealing with a girl. His car got stripped. And, um, he was chasing after the people who took uh his parts and other stuff from his race car and crashed into uh vans which happened to have those six orphan kids 
They both crashed down to the river. Uh, Brewster saved the kids and then saved another one. And those orphans had no home. Their folks, as they say, their folks died. And uh, that's how they met. Let's just say like in the beginning, um, they had a rough meet, let's just say. Honestly, my one of my personal favorite scenes from the beginning of the movie was when uh, Brewster was trying to get the kid to escape from a jail cell. And then, um, just, just I, I do apologize if I'm doing bad at this. I don't do movie reviews. I just remember like him trying to get the kids to escape. And then they stopped the uh, cops and all that stuff. Actually, one of the kids like ha held a gun to the um, to the cops, and and the cop was afraid. And it, and then the kid just put him in the jail. So honestly, that that was that was an interesting part. I'll tell you that a very interesting part. So yeah, then the kids and Brewster escaped. They managed to get out of jail. They stopped at a motel because there was a race going on called the Dixie 100. By the way, it, they were in Texas, if I can remember correctly. And uh, while Booster was hanging out with some folks, the kids managed to steal more parts from other cars. And somehow, surprisingly, they did not get caught. Then the next morning, everybody was coming to Brewster that they were like, hey, some people, some maniac took our parts and all that stuff. And I forgot to mention last night, um, in that movie last night, the kids set the garbage um, dumpster on fire. I think it had the parts there. And then the people inside the bar thought it was like some drunk idiot. Uh, setting it on fire, but it was those kids not only like threw the parts in the dumpster, they managed to also lit it on fire. Ooh, shit, those damn thieves. Then race day happened, and this was Brewster Baker's first race back behind the wheel for the first time in two years because he had like some bad accident at Talladega. I don't know if it was like a NASCAR Winston Grand National race, whatever it was. But I know that he was making a comeback. Uh, Brewster managed to finish fourth on the Dixie 100. And after the end of the race, uh, they had a, uh, Brewster made a deal with the kids that after the race, after they helped the cars, Shreveport was the stopping point to them. Basically, it was just like a one and done deal. One and done help deal. Um... And then the kids were obviously upset about that. Like, why would you leave us? That's not fair. Etc. Like, I can tell Brewster was not a fathering type. He did not want to be the fathering type. Even though his lady friend was like, yeah, he's doing, yeah, you're not doing bad as a fathering type. Brewster, what are you doing, boy? <laughs> the next race weekend. Um... The next race was at this track, correct me if I got the name wrong, called Biloxi Speedway. And this is the scene where we first meet his rival. It just so happens that his rival, I don't know his name, starts with a J. He used to be uh, Brewster's chief mechanic for a year. What he really wanted to do was to drive. And how did they become rivals was that... Um, um, this racer, his rival, told his sponsors that he was losing, um, money or something? Hold on. He was losing his, he told the sponsors that he was losing his stuff, he played with the car around. Shit. And after, uh, he played with his car a little, whatever, I believe he took away the brakes or something, like fiddled with it. And then he wrecked him at Talladega. He hit the wall about like two years ago. So that's how he was not racing for the past two years. 
And after that crash, the sponsor went to his rival. That's sketchy as hell, man. Later that night, the six-pack kids were back at it again. And what do I mean by that? They were back to stealing parts and stuff from the from the rivals' cars. So, how did they do it? Diane Lane, aka Swifty, her character, made a distraction to Brewster's rival. You know, like looking good on him, like um shit what is it called um uh, when someone distracts someone while they're going they're going through the real plan whatever so he just so she distracts her while <clears throat> the five boys were taking parts from him the rival almost fell for the um a uh, swifty's idea like Let's just say they were almost about to getting it on. Let's just say that. However, the rival heard the noise. And he was like, oh, what's going on? I heard noises. I got to check it out. She was like, no, everything's fine. All that stuff. Why don't we just do this and that? Yeah. Um, so he still gets distracted. And then I think more noises happen. And then he tried to check it out. Or if I can remember. Look, just like you guys know, I am so sorry for a bad movie review. I'm not good at movie reviews. I'm doing this because it's a racing movie. So, yeah. Anyway. So, I guess the deal's done. Um, they finally stole some stuff. And then she manages to just... Push him out of the way. She runs out. And then the guy was running out. Check what happened. Nothing happened. Then the, then the six-pack kids <clears throat> got caught by Brewster. Brewster's like, I thought you guys were supposed to be in bed. And they were like, oh, we saw a movie. Hey, no movie. Hey, you don't see no movie with these greasy hands. So, yeah, basically, they were caught in the act. And, um, yeah, uh, then Swifty ran away because of that stunt she tried to do. And her booster went after her. And then after, uh, her and Brewster were, like, in the front seat, she, what she really, she tells him what she want, really wanted to do. To be a, a normal girl who goes to school, be a high school cheerleader. You know, just be a normal teenage girl. Honestly, that was like a awesome moment because those kids don't really want to steal and all that stuff. Like, they got no parents. They're orphans. For her, at least she came out honestly about what she really wanted to be. A real girl. A real teenage girl. Just be a teenage girl and all that stuff. Awesome moment, in my opinion. Another mistake. The girl's name was Breezy, not Swifty. Fuck. So after that uh, moment happened... It is finally race day at Biloxi, Mississippi. <coughs> there was a race battle going on between Booster and, by the way, the villain's name is Turk Logan. The one who stole his sponsor, the one who really wanted to be a driver. The rival, by the way. So they're racing hard for the win. Let's just say Rubin's racing between Booster. He got into Turk. And after that moment, Turk blew up his engine. He ruined his car. He called it quits, but he was human. He was mad as hell. After that, Brewster won his first race in two years. He won at Biloxi. Then the kids were happy. Celebration was about to happen until Turk Logan beat the shit out of him. He punched him in the fucking face. And then, the, and then they were all fighting. The kids were in it as well. Oh, man, oh, man. And then, like, the cops came in. And then Turk just got off the cop. And then he punched him. And it was just a punching fest. It was just a fight. I'm not gonna lie. That was just a very interesting, entertaining moment. That's racing. That shit happens in racing. I think that happened more often old school racing. Besides the fight, after the win at Biloxi, the next race was at Nashville Raceway. 
or National Speedway, not Fairgrounds. It was the dirt track, of course. Brewster won once again. You know, we're at the moment of the movie that the comeback driver is on a winning streak. And after that, yes, you can see through what I'm what I'm doing of the movie. I'm just going through it, okay? I'm not a movie review, so leave me alone. <laughs> uh, so and then we get to the moment that we realize that they're having a family moment. And then Brewster finds out that the kids found a house that has two bathrooms outside Nashville near school, five bedrooms, soon have bathrooms, a dining room, a porch, kitchen, washer, dryer, typical house stuff. So they really wanted a a place to live with Brewster. And then while Brewster, <coughs> the next race, the next race at, shit, 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 let me go back, let me go back. At Roswell Raceway, Brewster won yet another race. He's back on his dominating ways. And then we get to the scene that there is this uh, man, a man with a cowboy hat. He, he's been focusing on Brewster Baker and his dominance when Brewster was winning races, winning and winning. He happens to be a team owner of a NASCAR Cup team, Winston Cup team. So this could be Brewster Baker's lifetime opportunity of moving up to the big leagues. After dominating in the late model dirt races. And then Brewster wins another race at a track called Steel City Raceway. Unfortunately, while the celebration while he was about to celebrate, he, he tried to find the kids. The kids were not there. And then the owner tried to get to Brewster. The Brewster's like he, he had something going on. The kids were arrested. And then uh, another best part about the movie. I like it. Brewster disguised himself as a sheriff, a straight, uh, state trooper, cop related. And then he got the kids out. He got the kids out. They were back headed. They were back out on the road. And then another, and another funny part was uh, the actual cop was trying to get the kids out. But it happens that uh, Brewster was actually, was disguised as that cop, last name Stone. Officer Stone, the real the real Officer Stone, wanted to get the kids out, and then the uh, um, lady officer's like, they're already out. Man, oh Brewster, you smart. After he took the kids. They were on their way to Georgia. Not for a late model race. It happens that Brewster Baker was making a NASCAR Winston Cup race appearance. I don't know if it's a debut race, but he's in NASCAR finally. They were going to Atlanta International Raceway, AKA as known as nowadays, Atlanta Motor Speedway. For the Coca-Cola 500, he was driving, he would be driving the number 49 Budweiser and Winston. Was it Budweiser? Yeah, it was Budweiser and Winston for Thunderbird. What a moment Brewster is having. He's got the kids. And because the, the Cup Series is a big league, it is the big times, it is for the big boys. He has to prepare for it. He has to exercise. You know, those training montages. He has to go through that. He's just getting ready for the big race. And then he qualifies for the Coca-Cola 500. He starts seventh. Whew, man, what a good moment. So while Brewster was being interviewed for the Atlanta 500, Turp Logan was watching the interview. By the way, if you guys remember, Turp Logan is the rival of Brewster Baker. And then he saw that. 
the next morning while Brewster was leaving our hotel on his journey to Atlanta National Raceway. It so happens that I believe this is Tuck Logan's cruise or friends or whatever attacked uh, Brewster. Then Brewster tried to fight back. Then, hold on. And then Turk got Brewster finally. Brewster was ditched into the woods. It is race day at Atlanta. Everyone's getting ready. Last minute preparations. Meanwhile, Brewster continue, continues to be in the ditch. He needed to get to the race fast. And then he found these two driver, these two guys in a Volkswagen Beetle. Who were high. Who were so who were going to the race as well by the way those two guys were high oh the 1980s oh boy oh boy oh boy so we met so we finally made it to Atlanta national raceway the six pack were getting interviewed the reporter wanted to speak to brewster himself but the kids were they didn't know what's going on either. So they're like, so one of the kids is like, oh, he's just taking the piss. And then Bruce is like, okay, thank you for your time. You know, like, gotta keep TV clean, you know. Oh my God, it's Dale! And Harry Gantz, and the king and you know, Bill Elliott. Oh, that shit, does Ricky run. Ah! Buddy Baker. Also, I don't know how the hell this happened, but Turk Logan is in the Cup Series as well. How the hell did he manage to go to race in the Cup Series for the Atlanta 500? I don't know. Did I miss something? So Brewster finally makes it to the race. Couple of minutes before the engines were starting, he makes it through. Thankfully, Turk was like, how the Come back! And then Brewster finally got it into his car. Time to go racing, boys! Woo! Another fun fact about the Atlanta race in general. Sorry for spoilers. Darrell Waltrip won that race. Apparently it was called the Coca-Cola 500. But the movie says Atlanta 500. Well, regardless, Waltrip won the race. And then we got Connie Sailor in the four crashed. Blue and engine and he crashed, yellow was out. While the race was still going on, a sheriff from Texas. Is it legal to have a different state of a cop go to another state? Is that even legal? I'm s I am I may sound stupid for asking that, but is it legal? But yeah, he sound, he makes it to Atlanta National Raceway to find the kids, so <clears throat> they can be taken away to be arrested again because they escaped. No! And then we have the number 46 named Ricky Rouse, not Ricky Rudd. And the 46 crashed. Is he a real driver or something? He blew up and spun. So it was a sixth car contender for the lead and maybe for the win. Two, both of them were Brewster Baker and Turk Logan. And then we had Ricky Rudd, Buddy Baker. I thought it was, I thought it was a six-car battle. So hang on, we got Buddy Baker, Ricky Rudd, Chuck Logan, Brewster Baker. So that gives a four-car battle done. And then I never expected this part to happen. Yes, this will have spoilers, but like I said, the movie will be in the link below. Buddy Baker and Ricky Rudd wrecked. And another one got involved, I forgot who it was, but I never expected that at all, but it's NASCAR. The they did, they, both of them just made contact. Oh, no! Oh, yeah, Ricky Rudd hard in the wall, and then we got someone, it said 94. Oh, my God. Thankfully, Buddy Baker, Ricky Rudd, and the driver of the 94 climbed out of the car unscathed. So, Brewster Baker is a contender to win the Atlanta 500. He was making his final pit stop. Unfortunately, the kids were not there. You wanna know what happened? The sheriff, the, the, the cops from Texas took away the kids. And <clears throat> so, 
So some of you guys might be thinking, A, did Brewster finish his pit stop, continue the race, and win? Or B, did he stop his own race, cost the win, and save the kids? Let me guys show you. If you guys guessed B for he, he cost his own race to save the kids, you were right. But did you guys expect that part to happen when he took out Turk Logan on Pit Road? I don't think you see that shit real life, NASCAR. Like, a driver just... I turned to the... Not only just turned straight left to the garage, but just took out another contender. I didn't... <laughs> I didn't expect that shit at all. I'm going crazy now because the ending was like, the ending of the movie, woo! I mean, well, I mean, that's NASCAR, so hell yeah, bud. So Brewster Baker stopped the cop car and he wanted the kids back, but the cop was like, no, I'm taking them down. And all that stuff, while that was happening, guess who made a special appearance? Chrissy Kanamaki! So Chris Economaki interviews Brewster Baker. He wanted to know what happened. And Brewster explained what happened that the sheriff was taking the kids. And whoo, man, oh man. And then uh, the sheriff made himself look bad. And then it was literally national TV. And then he tried to make himself look like a good guy. He's like, Oh, I was just like uh, pretending kids uh, taking back where to wear and all that stuff. And uh, apparently there's like some election going on for sheriff or whatever, mayor. I don't remember. So he just wanted the kids safe. But we know what he was doing. He was just taking the kids back. And to make himself look like a good guy, uh, the cop was like, these kids belong to Brewster Baker. Oh, and but look, look at this part. Look at this part. Brewster Baker. No shit, Dick Tracy. Oh, poor oh. Chrissy kind of Mackey. So after that, Brewster Baker adopted the six pack. He got married with his lady friend. They're all a. <coughs> they're a big family now. The kids are going to school. And, um. Yeah, they're a uh, family now. Officially, big time. But when the movie finished, I was like, but what the hell happened to the race? Like, is Brewster still racing? And all that stuff. Did he, is he still racing? Did he retire? I'm just going to assume that he's still kind of racing. But I don't know. I don't know. Nothing has been said after the, after the uh, wedding, racing wise. Well, yeah, so that concludes this review. Me talking about the movie. I know I probably did a horrible job uh, reviewing a racing movie. Just so I let you guys know, I am not a movie reviewer. I talk about this movie because it's racing. And this dude loves racing. So what is my personal opinion about the movie? In the first half, I was like, eh, it's going all right. It's, it's an all right movie. But then they got better, more interesting. Honestly, underrated movie. I don't think it's a rememberable movie, but it's still a good movie. I recommend it. One more reminder, the movie is in the link in the description. Give it a watch. It's very cool. It's, it's awesome to have like a big star like Kenny Rogers starring a racing movie. All right, so that'll do for this movie review. Um... Even though I'm a bad movie reviewer, is there like is there another movie you guys want me to review? Is there another movie you racing movie you want me to watch? Feel free to tell me in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching this video. Comment, like, and subscribe for more. Follow my social accounts: Instagram, I'm Impress25, and Impress48 underscore YT. Like, like my Facebook page, Inasco40 dash Nation Films. Shit. Um. Don't forget to turn on my YouTube channel notifications for this channel for more content. 
Thank you guys for supporting E Nation, and I will see you guys in the next video. There we go.